When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. The main story this evening, 74 football supporters are reported to have been crushed to death at the FA Cup final at Hillsborough in Sheffield this afternoon. Hundreds more were injured. Fans rushed through a broken turnstile, crushing Liverpool supporters against the front of the stand. The ambulance service and Sheffield's hospitals have been helping the untold number of injured. Concerned, but we're sorted now, aren't we? I suppose. Good. Right, what time does it leave? Not for another half hour. They should get a move on. That'll be Alfie now. Come on, you Reds! Save that for the terrace today. Excited. Too right. Should be a good one. Yeah, fingers crossed. Well, enjoy it. So, where is the lad? I did try to wake him. Can I go up? You know the way. Cheers. Look after them. Of course I will. Primarily, this inquest is to give closure to the loved ones of the deceased. It is not about apportioning blame, but about determining the cause of death. The court will now hear testimony from representatives of the deceased. Name. James. Aspinall. Mr. Aspinall, you are going to have to speak up if you wish to be heard. Sorry. My name is James Aspinall. Mr. Aspinall, 
Could you please describe the events that occurred before the match? If it's not too difficult for you. James travelled totally separately from me. Please would you clarify for the court, Mr Aspinall? James and Alfie travelled by coach, and I travelled separately by car. And were you to sit separately as well? I don't know where he was to stand, other than he had tickets for where Liverpool supporters were allocated standing room. If you wish to be heard. Please would you then describe the events that occurred after you arrived in the ground. The game started. I began getting concerned by the nature of the overcrowding, which appeared to be happening directly behind the goal. Please would you clarify, Mr Aspinall? If you wish to be heard. I could see people pushing and shoving people, climbing over people in the section of the ground directly behind the Leppings Lane goal. I did not see my son at all during this period. When did you become aware that your son was in fact deceased? At 3.30 a.m. I was shown the body of my son, James Gary Aspinall, by PC Grant. Some time after the crushing had occurred in the West End terracing, James was removed from the enclosure, placed onto the pitch, and taken to the gymnasium. It has not been possible to identify the persons involved in these actions. At 03.30 hours on Sunday the 16th of April 1989, Mr James Aspinall, James's father, identified the body of his son to Police Constable Grant in the temporary mortuary at the gymnasium. When I went up there to identify James from the picture, there was a woman screaming, sitting on the steps, screaming. I remember those screams all the time. This disaster was not an act of God. Our loved ones were killed due to human failings at every level. Like any other disaster, all we wanted was the opportunity to grieve. But we weren't given that. The authorities responsible were not and still have not been held to justice. How can you grieve? How can you forget something that stays fresh for so long? Only a comprehensive, unfettered review of all of the evidence and events surrounding the tragedy, both before, during and after, will satisfy our desire for the truth. Our resolve will remain indefatigable to attain our goal. Our lives were irrevocably changed by the events of that fateful day. We've seen families torn apart lost loved ones to grief and stress, suffered all manner of slander at the hands of the media and professional people. To you, this is one of many issues. To all of the families, the fight for truth and justice has become the focus of our lives. Well, let's cross straight over to Hillsborough, shall we, and get the latest news of developments there with Graham Beecroft. I would be very surprised if this FA Cup semi-final carries on, Kevin, but I think, and I can only say this by observing what I've seen, I think, although I hope we haven't, but I think we have had at least one fatality here, and we have a very, very serious situation, and uh, once again, it's all very easy, in fact, to uh, say who is to blame, but certainly there will be an inquest into this, and doesn't it Kate? come at just the stage of the proceedings where English football has got the final Kate? to go back into Europe and then we have this sort of chaos and I'm not blaming the... You need to come down here! ...at all at this stage of the proceedings. I don't know what's happened. Kate! Once the reasons for this all that have found out, then I think that we can look at the blame for this terrible incident. The advertising hoardings at the side of the ground are being no. taken up and used lectures to take people away. An ambulance has had to manoeuvre onto the field and oh go out through the far side, that's at the angle away from me in this main stand. There are people spread all over one side of the field. Another man is being lifted by the Liverpool supporters away from the far James? side over there. And no. there are still people going away on be. stretches. A very serious situation. What Another was he wearing? boy is being carried by his I don't know, I didn't see him go in the end. Very, uh, 
medically approved, I shouldn't think, but clearly in some sort of trouble himself, trying to get the, him to some sort of medical attention because the St. John's Ambulance Brigade are very much overworked here. I don't Dad. know how many of them are here, but it's clearly What's not enough to deal with a problem on this scale. And now the hospitals and the ambulances Jimmy. are dealing with crushed ribs and maybe dealing with things What's that are more and more serious. So once again, a terribly t a sad situation in a football match, a crucial football game. But I think, and I'm There's 17! Jim! observing what I've seen, I think, although I hope we have, but no. I think we have had at least one fatality Jimmy. here. And we have a very, very serious Find situation. Find our son! And uh, once again, it's all very easy, in fact. Whatever you do, say who is to blame, but certainly the don't be an come home here. without him! And doesn't it come at just the stage of the proceedings? I mean it, Jim! has got the byword to go back don't to Europe. And you we have this sort dare. of thing. And I'm not blaming the Liverpool supporters for this at all at this stage of the proceedings. I don't know what's happened. Now, once the reasons for that are found out, then I think that we can look at the blame for this terrible incident. The advertising hoardings at the side of the ground have been. Hello? I'm phoning to inquire about two passengers you took from Liverpool to Sheffield this morning. Two lads. Seventeen. Alfie Sidwell and James Aspinall. On the 15th of April 1989, a football match to decide a semi-final round of the FA Cup competition was to be played between the Liverpool and Nottingham Forest clubs. Only six minutes into the game, play was stopped when it was realised that spectators behind the Liverpool goal had been severely crushed. And the result, 96 died and over 400 received hospital treatment. Alfie Sidwell, a 17-year-old male from South Liverpool, will now give his statement. Mr. Sidwell, please would you describe to the court the events that occurred on the 15th of April, to the best of your ability. We got to the stadium. We were all dead excited. Liverpool were going to get through to the final, we knew it. But we didn't. To the best of your ability. For the sake of the record, Mr. Sidwell, would you please clarify who it was that you went to the game with? And for the benefit of the court, please speak clearly. We tried to get to the front, and we were going to win, and we wanted to see it happen. Would you please clarify? I got us a ticket. It was just James and I getting to the front. For the benefit of the court. But there were too many people. Mr. Sidwell, I have to tell you, we have no record of the purchase of the tickets or of the tickets themselves. I've got them here if you want to check. The deadline for submission of evidence has long passed, Mr. Sidwell. To the best of your ability, please speak clearly. But nobody asked. For the sake of the record. To the best of your ability. Nobody asked if I had any tickets. For the benefit of the court. Please continue with your statement, Mr. Sidwell. 
What are you saying? That we shouldn't have been there? That we're just a bunch of scout scallies on the run? For the benefit of the court. I paid for these. Mr. Sidwell, if you could just continue with your statement. To the best of your ability. People kept piling in. It was getting harder and harder to move. It was getting harder to breathe. You had been drinking? For the sake of the record. Sorry, what? For the benefit of the court. Had you been drinking? Please speak clearly. I'm 17. For the sake of the record. So you're telling me that as a 17-year-old young man, you've never had a drink? We were going to the football. To an FA Cup semi-final. Please note for the record, Mr. Sidwell refrained from answering the question. For the sake of the record. I didn't realise it was a question. I'm 17, of course I wasn't drinking. Refrained from answering the question. If you could just continue with your statement, Mr. Sidwell. Me and James were at the front. And then the cross started. Refrained from answering the question. For the sake of the record. You couldn't move at all? Not even an arm? Refrained from answering the question. For the benefit of the court, please speak clearly. For the sake of the record. To the best of your ability. Listen! It was horrible. We just went down the Leppins Lane end. We got down there and the cross started. I couldn't breathe. Then they pushed me out. He did. James did. All I could do was watch through the wire. It was awful. Then I couldn't see James anymore. He disappeared into the crush. And then they started to pull them out. They were blue. Incontinent. Their mouths open, vomiting, eyes staring. A pile of dead bodies lay and grew outside the gate three. The struggle to reach the open gate caused a horrendous blockage of bodies. The dead, dying and desperate became interwoven in a sump at the front of the pens. And all I could do was watch. For the sake of the record. As the enormity of the disaster was realized, many of the fans milling about were bitter and hostile towards the police, blaming them for what had happened. Please speak clearly. Officers were confronted, abused, spat upon, and even assaulted. A small number of hysterical fans had to be subdued. What do you have to say about that? Can you blame us? I just stood there, watching stiff as a board! For the sake of the record. Refrained from answering the question. It became clear that many of the fans did not have a ticket, leading to heavy overcrowding. According to Chief Superintendent Duckinfield's statement, the majority of fans were highly intoxicated, having consumed between five and ten pints each. That's just stinking fat lies! How can you stand there and say that? For the sake of the record. Please speak. Yeah. How can you stand there and say that when my friend was killed because of his incompetence? For the benefit of the court. Mr. Sidwell, I think the court has had quite enough of your account. After all, this is a court of law and not a soap opera. Please recount for the court the events that took place after leaving the football ground. To the best of your ability. But after the event, not during. Please speak clearly. I tried to find James, but he wasn't there, no matter how hard Mr. I Mr. Sidwell, after you left. For the benefit of the court. I went back on the bus, and when I got off, his family were there, waiting for him.
How did it affect me? You must be joking. Have you ever had something happen to you that changed the way you think, changed the way you feel? Well, this incident has done exactly that. And it's not just me. This thing has changed the lives of so many people. And it's not like those life-changing experiences people have when they see a bright light and are overcome with a feeling of peace. Come on, give me a break. This is worse. <coughs> because you have to watch. Watch as everything falls out of place, just enough to affect those around you as well as yourself. That's what happens. Every time I kick a ball, see that red shirt, hear that song, I remember. And for most, the memories are of the screaming and the shouting, white hot rage emanating, people adamant to place the blame. It sticks to you like a parasite. It tarnishes the memories of the ones lost. And that, that is the saddest thing. The chorus of the 96 is drowned out by the screaming. Do we have to be at the church? Quarter past. I think that's when the other families are getting there. We just need to keep calm, keep a level head. They want to see us react. You think they'd leave us alone? Today of all days. I know. We don't need. We don't want any drama today. That's what they'll be expecting. For us to be unreasonable, drunk, hooligans. Are you telling me I can't have a drink on the day of my son's funeral? I'm just saying that maybe not before. If you're not supposed to drink on a day like this, when are you supposed to? Margaret. When? Are you supposed to, Tim? Are we allowed to have a drink? When we've seen our son through a scream, I can't hug him goodbye. Is it okay to drink then? Or does that make me a hooligan? For wanting a drink. For needing a drink. When I have just seen my boy on a metal slab. Don't shout! Don't shout at me! I haven't done anything! All I've done is lose my son, same as you! Then who am I supposed to shout at? I can't shout at the people responsible. I can't shout at anyone. Nothing I say makes a bloody difference. Because the people 
there. Have you decided what records you want to play at the wake? I want to use this one. It needs to be just background music, something without lyrics. But I want this song. I'm sure we've got something more appropriate. Besides, I must have heard that hundreds of times. I don't care. Sorry? I don't care that you've heard it before. I want to use this one. Margaret. This song was the last thing that James gave me. some others as well. Have you had a look? I don't need any more. I've already said. Well, just play the song. Play it. This day, this bloody day, it's never going to end, is it? I don't know, Maggie. I just don't know. When James was seven, we gave him a football for his birthday. And that was that. He used to go out in the garden every day after school to practice kicking and dribbling. I used to shout at him for breaking the pots that are kept between the doors. He used them as goalposts, you see. He was good though, James was. When Alfie gave him those tickets, he was as excited as he'd been that day we gave him that first football. Hillsborough took my baby away from me. No pain on this earth could ever come close to the pain of a mother burying her child. When Alfie got off that bus, I knew straight away that James hadn't made it. His face said it all. When I went to see him, just wanted to cuddle him. I had his coat for him, but they wouldn't let me near. I could only look at him through the glass. I said I wanted to take him home. 
and they just said, he doesn't belong to you anymore. He belongs to the coroner. I was just gonna. Don't mind me. I don't know why you would. What? Don't mind me. Pretend I'm not here. Sometimes it doesn't feel as though I am. What are you talking about, Kate? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What are you doing?
There's a ticket. I thought. Uh. He wanted me to give it to him after the game. I, uh... Never got the chance. I just thought I'd put it in here. In his room. I can't bring myself to throw it away. It was his first game. And I bought him a ticket. You don't want to know. I just need to understand what happened. I'm not going to talk about it, Kate. I'm his sister. I deserve to know. No, Kate. I won't. I don't mean anything else. He's not here anymore. But sometimes... It's almost as though I was the one that died. Everything is about him. Everything. Just tell me, please. I won't. I won't. Because I can't. He was so excited, James was. It became a bit of a running joke that every conversation we had ended up about that match. It was starting to wind me up a bit, if truth be told, but I never stopped him. James was glowing. I still remember the morning of the match so clearly. Mum and Dad. Seems so stupid now, worrying about the two of them getting the bus. James practically ran out of the door, he was so excited. He didn't say goodbye. I understood because I knew he just wanted to get there. But he never said goodbye. Then Everything changed. I didn't just lose my brother. I lost my mum and dad too. Those weeks after it happened were awful. The atmosphere in the house. Everything was so fragile. We were all trying to be there for each other, but nobody wanted each other near. Things started to pick up again after the funeral. Mum and Dad went to all of the court hearings. They really started to campaign. They want justice. I do too, but deep down, I know nothing will bring him back. Nothing will change my life back to how it was. Deep down, all I need right now is my parents in my life. But they're so busy campaigning. All the time, it's like they've forgotten. 15th of April, 1989. That date to so many means nothing. Nothing. On the 15th of April, 1989, my little brother, my baby brother, 96 people died on that date in 1989. Hundreds more lost their lives. Alfie? Alfie? Is he still on the bus?
was nothing I could do. What happened that day and since was wrong. It was wrong that the responsible authorities knew Hillsborough did not meet minimum safety standards and yet still allowed the match to go ahead. It was wrong that the families have had to wait for so long and fight so hard just to get to the truth. It was also wrong that neither Lord Justice Taylor nor the coroner looked properly at the response of the other emergency services. But the evidence from today's report will make some very difficult reading. I am profoundly sorry that this double injustice has been left uncorrected for so long. While nothing can ever bring back those that were lost, with all the documents revealed, nothing held back, the families at last have access to the truth.